Welcome to the Battery Testing Mentor Podcast. My name is Johannes and here I discuss all topics around battery testing and battery handling. Short, on the point and with actionable advice. Also visit www.batterytestingmentor.com and register there for the email update. With every episode, I send out the key takeaways and the summary out to your inbox so that you can make up your mind if you want to listen to the episode or not. Of course, it always makes sense to listen to it, but I know sometimes schedules are tight. And if you have any questions, comments, feedback, wishes for episodes, then just answer this email, reach out to me and let me know. I'm happy to listen to your inputs and make this podcast more attuned to what you really want to. Yeah, with that, I want to kick off here a kind of small topic block for the next couple of episodes. I want to talk about the EU battery regulation that came out recently, kind of in, in regulation time frame, brand new. And that kind of is now a big deal, especially here in Europe, where I'm also located, of course, um, because now very soon all the battery manufacturers need to fulfill this battery regulation with the first chapters or, or paragraphs and then more and more are coming and in the end it's quite a big thing. This EU battery regulation was published in 2023, so one year ago in, in summer, in July. It's a huge document. I, I have it here, like printed out, double-sided printout, so it's still quite a big thing. It has 117 pages full with yeah, legal text. It's not so fun to read, but you have to dig through if you want to understand it. And the, the point is also there are a lot of references to other documents, other legal documents from the EU. And yeah, in the end, somehow a battery that comes onto the market very soon need to fulfill these, the, the whole document. Basically everything that's written in here need to be fulfilled at one point in time, which is not a small endeavor. So I wanted to, to use this yeah point in time because I'm also working in some projects and then I got in touch with somebody who yeah really knows a lot about this uh, battery regulation. I thought, okay, let's make a short introduction episode, then make an interview with this guy. It will come out next episode. So stay tuned. It will be really, really interesting, really insightful. And then I also plan to make a short wrap up episode in the end, kind of summarizing the key points and, and uh, talking also about kind of the testing point of view of this battery regulation, because the battery regulation itself, I mean, it replaces the old EU battery directive, which is super old. If I remember right, it's from the 2000s. It is a very short document, a couple pages long was made mainly with the, the, the consumer batteries in mind, because that was the big thing. During these times, there were not so more, basically no electric vehicles, no stationary batteries and so on. And so it was not really a regulation that, that could be easily, or it was not really a regulation, let's put it this way, where the, the electric vehicle application or stationary battery application or industrial application was in the mind of the people who wrote it. And therefore there was this push then from the EU to say, okay, we need to overhaul it. We need to really make an, an battery regulation and regulatory framework for bringing batteries on the market in the EU, where all these big batteries are covered. And so basically this regulation was discussed a couple of years and there was huge back and forth already in, in the 2000s during COVID because there was the first draft published. Yeah, there was a lot of pushback, a lot of discussion, and then it took quite some time until 2023, until the final version was released and now it's here. And everybody who is basically in touch with batteries, like as a product, 
need to be aware about this battery regulation and in part really needs to make sure this battery regulation is fulfilled. Because what is really fascinating about this document, it's not only about what you need to make to, to sell a battery, like kind of this market entry requirements, what is often the case, but it really tries to cover the whole chain, the whole value chain of, of battery production, battery bringing on the market, recycling. And the key point in some way is that it wants to establish the closed loop. So that means battery is produced, battery is used, battery is maybe repurposed, battery is recycled, and then this recycling ma or recycled material goes back into the production. And this is kind of try, like the, the, the goal of this regulation is really to cover everything which is a huge endeavor and therefore it's such a doc long document with almost 120 pages and i have to say like when you read this there's still a lot not defined so it's kind of only the establishing the framework telling the people oh we need to uh, cover everything there are still some parts that need further definitions further explanations and yeah this will then come in the next years and yeah, anyway, with the current status, it's already a complex document. So what are the key areas? On the one hand, it's this whole production topic, like about input materials, about due diligence, carbon footprint calculations. Basically, the, the point is really to make the batteries sustainable, have no child labor included, have um, proper materials that are not like kind of from illegal sources so there's really this <clears throat> the goal in mind to that the producer of the battery knows everything that goes into the battery it is also like important that it's not about just having the recipe basically and then you produce the battery for for a couple of years and nothing changes but in the end you need to basically track every batch every production batch where maybe different material is coming or from a different source, it all must comply with the regulation and it must be tracked. And that is kind of the, the next big thing. There is a digital battery passport plant that kind of covers the whole use cycle. And But also the production details need to be mentioned there. And in the end, everybody needs to have access to the, the battery passport. I mean, mainly the person who owns the battery, but there is like a, a lot of detailed information in there that needs to be provided. For example, if you sell the battery to the a repurposer that changes the, the battery for a different use, then he needs to know the details of that battery and this he should get via the battery passport. Then we have this whole end of life topic like what I said already, when the battery is has, has kind of finished the first life, it should be ready for a second life, it should be able to be repurposed. It should be possible that somebody comes and disassembles the battery basically and reassembles it into a new battery who isn't counted also like as a producer. So in some way it is similar regulation to the first life, whoever disassembles the battery then is has the same responsibilities like someone who, who does it like builds a battery new but there there are kind of the requirements more that this should be possible like that there should not be big obstacles on the way to to making it possible and of course this is sometimes some something that is like companies are not really comfortable with it, that in some way their battery is taken, it's repurposed by some maybe small company which says, hey, I got here these batteries from the old cars of that brand. And in the end, this brand is, is kind of suddenly mentioned in this whole second life product. And therefore, officially, it is completely then, then there, there is no liability anymore in there. It's really the new producer. But we will see how this plays out. And then it goes into end of life where recycling is mandatory. Like, especially for big batteries, there is a 100% or collection rate, recycling rate. 100% of the batteries need to be brought 
back into the loop, into the recycling. And then there are kind of efficiency requirements, how good or how much material need to be taken out of the battery for reuse and how much can really become lost basic or get lost so basically it's not possible to just take the battery and and put it in a big melting pot and fire it up and then basically there's nothing left but you have recycled it kind of you really need to take apart the battery create materials that are reusable then Besides this battery passport, there are also things like labeling requirements for the battery, CE marking, kind of this conformity uh, declaration that is completely new um, before batteries could just be yeah, sold, like electric vehicle batteries didn't need to have a CE marking in Europe. Now this comes into place and of course there are then a lot of different requirements following up with this CE mark. And then the, the next big thing is that new batteries need to have recycled material inside, um, which is also quite a big requirement, especially considering when, when other world areas might not have this requirements, will they get kind of new batteries? And then there is like special batteries in Europe that have recycled material and maybe are inferior or maybe it doesn't make any difference like this is still completely open but it is already mentioned that uh, this recycled content is necessary yeah what is also important maybe in terms of definitions there are really like all the batteries grouped into different sections there are ev batteries there are light means of transport which means scooters for example and there are starter lightning and ignition batteries especially like the 12 volt batteries basically consumer batteries and then there is this category of industrial battery where basically every big battery falls into i think if it's more than two kilograms in weight and it doesn't fit into ev light means of transport or starter then it goes into industrial battery and the goal is really that every battery in europe is covered by this regulation so every battery really falls into these groups and has then uh, like certain aspects to be fulfilled. there are some exceptions like i think military batteries <laughs> don't need to fulfill anything and i think also space uh, batteries so if your your battery is installed on a rocket <laughs> and sent into space then you don't need to fulfill the eu battery regulation but these are really like specific exclusions it will hardly apply apply to most and uh, maybe i just leave it like this uh, you see like there's a lot of things in in these 120 117 uh, pages and i hope this gives you already kind of a feeling what we are talking about now in the next episode where i'm really excited to to welcome then a guest and we will talk in more depth in about the the battery regulation until then, I thank you very much for listening. Hope you enjoyed it. If you do, then give me a rating. Happy to, to hear any feedback from you. And I wish you a good next two weeks. Until next time, then see you.